all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Boxing Will Weekly, speaking with featherweight prospect Raymond Savage Ford. Where did the passion for the sweet science start for you, Raymond? It just came from like, just fighting. I always liked fighting growing up when I was in school and stuff like that. I used to fight a lot, so um, it was just always in me, I guess. You know, just because I came from Camden doesn't mean that I was, I was going to be good at boxing. It was just something that I, I worked for. And then I was like blessed with like hand speed. Like everybody don't have hand speed in boxing. If they, if you know, if I feel like if they could, they would have hand speed. But I feel like you gotta be blessed with like hand speed. You can work on it a little bit, but I feel like you just gotta. I don't know. I think it's like something uh, like to do with like your muscle spasms and stuff like that. I don't know. I feel like it's just like a reaction type thing. So when did you figure out that you had, you know? hand speed above the rest. When did you figure that out? They always used to say it when I was younger, like when I was far or like my coaches and other people, they would say it, but I really didn't believe it. I didn't believe how fast I really was until people like, they just kept saying it, kept saying it. Cause you know, for me, it was just like, I felt like I was at a regular speed cause it's just, it's me. So I guess people look at me and it is like different from me, like viewing it myself because it's coming from me. So, but I ain't start really believing in my speed until like I got a little older, probably like around like seventeen. Did were you a fight fan growing up? Like a fight fan of uh, professional boxing when you were growing up? From the from I want to say from like ten years old, I was like into boxing. I wasn't really into boxing before that. I was like more like watching wrestling and stuff. Like that. But then when I got introduced to boxing, that's when I just started watching wrestling and just started focusing on boxing. And who did you like to watch when you were younger? Floyd Mayweather, Roy Jones, Adrian Broner. What drew, what drew you to them? Just their skills and, you know, um, their hand speed, things like that. Yeah, Roy Jones had uh, probably some of the fastest that's ever been in the ring. Uh, yeah, yeah. That makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, in terms of, you know, boxers today, who do you draw inspiration from? I'm watching Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, Javante, Gerard Ennis, uh, Terrence Crawford. Um, I like Anui, Canelo Alvarez. Yeah, that's pretty much it as of right now. Uh, and am I right in saying that you sparred with Shakur Stevenson? Yeah, yeah I sparred with Shakur uh, a lot. That's like my big brother. Actually, he's helped me throughout this camp more like, you know, being in my corner and giving me corner and things like that. So right now I'm at his house actually. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. That's that's awesome. And I heard you also trained in the same gym as uh, Tevin Farmer. And he also, you've, you've won some rounds with him as well? Yeah, definitely. Spark uh, it's having a few times. Yeah. What do you What do you think the most important thing is uh, from Shakur that you've learned? I learned more just from him being in my corner and you know help me see different things that I don't normally see. So um, it's just like little like little things that tell me I'm doing wrong or what I need to start doing more. It's just little things like that, but um. Yeah, the main thing he just be saying like, it ain't no, it ain't gonna be no debate if I'm doing the hit and I'm not getting hit. So it's just about being more smart and just completely dominating through every round, staying focused through every round, every second of the round. So that's what, it, that's the advice I take from him. Shakur obviously coming off a massive win over Oscar Valdez. What did you think about his performance in that one? And you know, there's some people that have him on some pound for pound lists, where does he rank pound for pound in your eyes? I put him like around nine, nine, eight. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he definitely had a, a great performance against Oscar Valdez. And uh, I feel like he he performed in a different way that people didn't expect. It. Uh, I feel like people expected him to move a lot. And uh, in that fight, he showed that he, like, he was stepping to him and just sitting in front of Oscar Valdez and making a miss. And still, you know, controlling him. 
Completely agree. Completely agree. But let's get into your fight this weekend against Richard Medina. He's a very good opponent, obviously another undefeated one, like you've mentioned before. Do you look, is he probably your toughest test to date? Uh, we never know until you really, until you get in there. But um, he's got the best record that I'm going up against. Um, I don't believe he's fought like, you know, top competition or, or things like that. But uh, he definitely got a good record and I'm fighting him for a reason. So it looks good on paper and uh, I'm locked in and focused. You're coming off of a uh, split decision win over Edward Vasquez. I'd like for to get your thoughts on that because obviously there was the altercation afterwards that happened, uh, and two of those scorecards read pretty heavily favored in your in your direction. So honestly, it's probably the other scorecard that's going off the board, not uh, the scorecards that led in your favor. What did you think? What were you thinking after that fight? So I'm gonna tell you what I was thinking during the fight before, okay. like before my coaches and stuff, like they told me that I needed to pick it up. So during the fight, I felt like I was controlling him with a jab. I didn't look, of course I didn't look at his chart. And uh, it was like difficult at times in there, but I felt like I was still controlling the fight with a jab, even though like he had his moments, like he had me on ropes at times, but I felt like he wasn't doing nothing for real. He wasn't really landing. And uh, the crowd, I feel like the crowd was really like playing into the, the head of like my coaches and things like that. And, uh, but yeah, when I, like when my coaches was telling me like, yeah, you gotta pick it up. I'm like, I'm losing. Like, cause in my head, I'm thinking I'm, I'm winning. Like just based off the jab, you can't get out of the way of my jab. So then like, I don't know, it's, it's close. Like I needed to pick it up. So then like you see in the last, I wanna say two to three rounds, started to see me like press them a little bit more and um in my head i'm like like after the fight like after the fight was over i'm taking my gloves off and stuff like that and waiting for the decision i'm like but damn yeah they might be right it could have been closer than what i actually thought it was because we in arizona he had the crowd every time he would do something they would go crazy so that might if my coaches feel like it's a close fight then you never know what the judges might be thinking so like for the decision, I was a little nervous, but after, and then like I'm hearing those scorecards, like when they say his scorecard and they gave it to him, I'm like All right, that was close. Then when they said my scorecard, cause I know the second scorecard was gonna end up being mine. It was like 97, I'm like, all right, so boom. Like that's how I felt like the fight was. So then when they said 98, 92, I'm like, yeah, that gotta be mine. Cause both of them judges had to see the same thing. It ain't no way that I lost eight rounds to this guy with, and like based off what he was doing, I felt like he he wasn't consistent on his work. Like he was just fighting in spirits. He was doing good in spirits. So I felt like I was more controlling the fight. Um, I went back and watched the fight and I still feel the same thing. Like I feel like he had good moments in the fight, but I felt like throughout the fight, I was controlling with a jet. That was also two fights. You know, you came back from the first close decision in your career the split draw to Aaron Perez you came back yeah. two knockouts and then another split decision uh in your last fight do you think that now with those two in the, in the in the background I know prior you were looking at a rematch with Aaron Perez he obviously lost his last fight so I don't think there's any reason for you at your level to go back to that fight but with those two fights in mind do you look for a stoppage against Richard Medina nah I ain't looking for no stoppage I just want to um like I said, like I want to be focused mentally throughout the four ten rounds, and you know, just complete dominate throughout the ten rounds. Like if the stoppage comes, it comes, but I just want to control the whole fight, no matter what. Like through every second of the round. So where does the nickname Savage come from? It comes when it comes. Like you'll see when, like you look at some of my stoppages. If I smell blood, I get somebody hurt. I get all over. And nine times out of 10, if I hurt them in that round, they go that same round, like not even a minute after. Like as soon as they get up in the little eight count, they get a little eight count or whatever, I'm on them. And then I end up stopping them. So the Savage is definitely there, but I'm also a boxer too. I'm a boxer first, but the Savage can definitely come out. You're saying you had the nickname Savage outside of boxing? Yeah. Just 
just because or was there a reason to it i was just like real aggressive like even though like i wasn't allowed kid i wasn't allowed at all i just was snap like instantly if somebody you know pissed me off anything like that i would i had a short fuse so i would spark up real quick so right now amongst those champions at 130 obviously or 126 the guys you're you're going for who do you want next um i want that that wba um super title from leo stan cruz Either he give it up or he come back down to fight and defend it. Um, I, don't, I don't know what's going on, but um, yeah, I want that title. I'm ranked number six for it. I know after this fight, I'm probably going to be ranked higher for it. So yeah, that's what I'm, I'm looking for. It seems like you're pretty locked in on the whole boxing thing, obviously. But outside yeah. of that, you know, in between camps, what other interests do you have? I, I just like to enjoy my, my, my time with my people. Uh, my daughter, I like that. I love being around her. You know, she take boxing off my mind. Like it's just, you know, it's it's a different experience. You know, having a a, a child, especially a girl, for me anyway. Um, so I love spending time with her. I love spending time with my family. I love spending time with my friends. You know, traveling and things like that. So I just like being around my people. That's awesome, man. How old's your daughter? My daughter is one. Oh yeah, wow! She, she turned one in um, February. So and yeah, every day she's changing. She got something new going on. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be mad when I be missing certain things when I'm not there. So yeah. How is living that life? I mean, a year ago, when that transition was made, how was that? Uh, in the beginning, I was nervous. Um, I ain't really know what to expect, and uh, it was like kind of rough at first night. Like, I'm not saying that, that it was rough, but like, it's just like, you gotta adjust. You gotta adjust to, you know, the new life, the new father life. And, uh, you know, waking up at night, things like that, her crying in the middle of the night, got me bottles, you gotta change her, and all that stuff, so. Uh, it was different at first, but I feel like as time go on, it started to get easier. Like, now she's more independent. She do stuff more on her own now. She's starting to say, like, words and you're like she's starting to give you like different responses like she knows what's going on she's more alert so yeah has she seen you fight yeah she's seen me fight um caraballo um in new york and um i'm actually going like try to get her to come to this fight so she's coming to the fight she's seen one of your fights are you worried at all that she might want to become a boxer someday i am worried because I know how dangerous the sport is and I know what can happen in the sport. So, uh, but I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't encourage her to box. Um, I'd try to keep her in it because of me, not like in it, like her being in it, like boxing and things like that, but like her knowing about the sport because I'm in it and her being like around, but I wouldn't want her to actually to compete. Like it's cool if she go to the gym, she want to hit the bag a little bit, you want to learn how to throw her hands. But as far as like competing and things like that, sparring and all that, nah, I ain't gonna. Especially because I know how hard it is to be a boxer and how disciplined you gotta be. And just, you know, you gotta give up a lot. You gotta sacrifice a lot. You gotta, you know, give up your childhood, kind of. Like, you know, um, you can't really go outside and hang with your friends as much as you want to. That's why, like, I do a lot of that now. Like, when I'm not in camp, I enjoy all my time, as much time as I can with the people that I love because I know. Boxing can be lonely. It's a lonely sport. Like right now, I'm out here by myself. Not saying that like I'm not with people, like I'm with supporting everybody. But as far as like my people from home, I'm not with them right now. So I'm alone in that aspect. But yeah, it can be a lonely sport. I completely get it, man. I get it. Uh, my final question is the is the final message from from next Saturday. What are you looking to tell your fans on? You know, because obviously. Uh, you're still working up your way to fight on some co-mains, some main events. So to get people tuned in before all of that next week and before the world title fights go down, what's your final message to them? Uh, yeah, just, you know, tune in. It's not going to be the same fight as my last fight. I'm more locked in, I'm more focused right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to 
putting on a, a dominating performance, whether it's a knockout or I go all 10 rounds. It's just me showing that I'm completely on a different level and that I can be in there with a the guy and they can't do nothing at all about what's going on in there and I can control the whole situation. So make sure y'all tune in. You're going to see some skills, speed, defense, uh, a whole lot more. So.